Oh, hey. So welcome to Brox and Max. Today is some shop work. Have to do some general oil change and fuel filter change on our track skid steer. It's the Bobcat brand. For those of you that are maybe a fan of Bobcat, maybe not a fan of Bobcat, this to me personally is the most versatile and visibility is a touch better than most and maneuverability I feel like they're faster than any other brand of skid steer it's got 650 hours on it so between the 50 hour break-in change and then our routine every 300 hour maintenance it is due and we'll grease it while it's in here the one part that I do like about Bobcat still is you can still have the original functions instead of the pilot control or I believe they call it the H pattern. I am still a foot pedal guy. Why did I not transition? This is a 2022 machine, I believe. Why on earth would I special order a machine like this instead of just transitioning to the pilot well to me the live hydraulics because this is live you can feel everything I I'm not depending on electrical the foot pedals are still live hydraulics I feel like you can feel things as opposed to just electronic solenoids you're basically forcing the machine to move whether it wants to or not and I feel they're faster yeah, it is a 2022. So I feel the live hydraulic hand and foot control machine is faster than anything else. I can't prove it. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, pilot control operators out there that can really move some dirt with the modern day controls, but I have yet to find one. But anyway, this is a very, very popular machine in this little company we have going here it practically goes on every single job that we go on and it's a good cleanup machine good finish machine it just follows our bigger equipment to just make everything smooth before we get out of there bought it brand new this is about the fifth one that we've had and we usually put on about a thousand to twelve hundred hours before we trade them in and just this is one machine that we constantly keep upgraded because, like I said, it's a very, very crucial machine in our little fleet here. One thing I do not care about this machine, it's got depth because it meets the requirements. I believe it's 75 horse and higher. That's when the depth comes into play. This is a 92 horse machine I believe so we're gonna do a quick oil well I say quick can't be quick anybody that works on cars whether you got to take the skid plate off to change oil in cars anymore you cannot get to the bottom of the oil pan the oil pan is way down there and there's no plate underneath here to expose the bottom of the oil pan so they got this little tricky line here that I will show you how to take it apart there's a little door right under here you can see with the bolts you got a fish actually i'm wrong this little door right here i don't know if you can see it there's two little bolts right there it's just a little trap door that you fish this line through and it falls into your oil pan that you have on the floor don't be in a hurry because it is not by any means a fast oil change to do this that's about the only complaint maintenance wise that i have on this machine i wished that it didn't have the side mount motor so you rely on that big drive belt but 
we haven't had any real super bad issues. You just have to make sure that it stays tight as opposed to, I believe, John Deere, maybe even Cat, they have the direct drive. The motor sits in this way and the radiator's in the back and has a direct bolt-on pump to run the hydraulics on the machine. Where the Bobcat, the radiator is up here. Now you just have to make sure to keep this clean so you don't overheat the motor and that never really seems to be a problem with what we have I mean we have a bush hog for this and it still doesn't plug it up we keep it clean and make sure that there isn't any type of issues I don't know how I would feel about the radiator being mounted in the back because if you happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time back into a tree that you didn't see back into a branch there goes your radiator and bobcat really went above and beyond to make sure that nothing gets in there i mean this is extremely fine a, a fine screen to lift up out you just unscrew this and then pick this thing up actually you gotta pick it up out because the hoses are in the way give me a second You gotta clean it anyway. So there's your radiator here. And then you got air conditioning and hydraulic cooler. Hydraulic cooler is right there. So everything is up here and there's hardly any debris at all on the top of this. Like I said, you just have to make sure that this screen this screen here is clean you just use some shop air clean it up and actually you can see right through it so they kind of know what they're doing so anyway back to the oil change and fuel filter we'll make it quick and easy oil fuel grease and out the door it goes so just leaning this radiator guard hood up against the machine you could see all of the debris that fell out of this and it's practically clean the way that it is now you could be somewhere mowing a field or out in the woods somewhere and if you notice your machine overheating you can literally take this off and just give it a little bump against the tracks and all of that falls out so the design is kind of a plus for this So you can see right through that. So it's a nice design. little trap door here So as you can see, it's going to be a while. I didn't put it in slow motion. This is as fast as it can go. It's not even going to help when I crack open the fill, but we'll try it. Cracked open the fill. didn't do a damn thing so I'll continue on with this fuel filter see how difficult this is to get off I can't remember what happened the last time I'm assuming I have to take these brackets off to get that 
up and out of the way. Actually, probably unbolt this and this whole thing comes out. It's not a easy setup, but everything is so compacted in here that you just have to deal with it. Anybody like uh, Pringle sour cream and onion? I do. So the oil is almost, almost empty. Still have a little stream still coming out. Just waiting on that. So anyway, back to the Pringles can. For those of you that don't like Pringles and you own a Bobcat or any other real pain in the butt oil change machines, you might want to like eating some Pringles more often. So I'm gonna just cut this. Just gonna take a razor blade and just kind of do a quick Cut this much, off with his head, didn't plan that, so you have, looks like this, sneak the Pringles can under all the, somewhere there's a motor in here, but underneath all the wires and all the crap, you stick the Pringles can under there so you can spin that filter off and if there is any oil left in the filter, it doesn't dribble all over the side of the motor and just make a freakishly ridiculous mess. Another stucky filter. Nice. 
You just leave it there for a minute. Let it all drain out. So you got minimal mess. So a little bit that was dripped on, I used the plastic lid. Just dump the rest in the bucket. That was about a half a coffee cup. So that's just something that won't be, you won't be catching it and trying to figure out how to grab all of it. Never mind sinking to the belly pan of the motor, risking a potential fire. And that's all the mess that I made. You just put a shop rag over it and wipe it off and nothing went down in the crevices to have more of a igniter if there was ever a fire. And this is the style that you can't prime the oil filter. So I'll put an oil filter on, fill it with oil and I'll put a fuel filter on this housing, put it all back together. It does have a electric fuel pump, so it will self prime.